what's up people multiply here and today what i'm going to do or what we're going to do is get started with the lima app for the ipad and tractor all on a mac so it's a bit filly to set up and especially if you haven't done it before or you can't be bothered to read the complicated kind of user manual um definitely is a bit fiddly and it's not that obvious or intuitive um so yeah we're going to get into it and um you might want some sort of beverage because it does get a bit technical and a bit nerdy um so yeah cool stuff first things you're going to need and want to slash do before you get started is download the lima app for the ipad um so yeah lima lima that cool little animal which a um, bit of a side note watch a video on youtube of a lima kind of running slash skipping slash dancing they, they run in this really cool way it's kind of like like they're dancing but side skipping it's pretty rad um so yeah lemas are cool um so yeah you're gonna want the lima app and you're gonna need two bits of software from Lima for the Mac, which is the Lima Editor and the Lima Demon. I think it's a pretty similar process for a PC, but stuff like um, the details are a little bit different, but yeah, same sort of idea. So yeah, Lima Editor, which is your little bit of software that allows you to design the interface. Um, and then Lima Demon, uh, which is the bit of software that sorts out all the MIDI routing. So um, yeah, let's, um, we'll leave them not opened up for now. So we're going to want to, first of all, create a connection between the Mac and the iPad. And there's two different ways of doing it. Uh, one of which is to create what's called an ad hoc Wi-Fi network. And that basically creates a network just for the two devices to kind of talk to um, each other using Wi-Fi. Uh, the other way is using an MIDI interface, a MIDI interface. Uh, there's a few different options for that. Um, it's certainly the way to get the latency down if you're, say, if you're using it to create more of an instrument style thing and you want to get the latency as low as absolute possible. Um, yeah, certainly doing it kind of wired using MIDI interface is going to be the easiest way. Um, saying that, I've been having a bit of an experiment with the ad hoc Wi Fi network route and it's perfectly usable. Uh, you just got to kind of get used to it and it's, it's latency is not too bad at all, really. So we're going to show you the Wi Fi way also because it's free. So. Now we actually start. So on the Mac, um, go over to the Wi-Fi button. Going to go down to Create Network. Now you can call it whatever you like. Call it something you know, like Lima. Um, you can call it Skr Skrillex if you like. You can call it. Um, you call it Network. Uh, that's really unhelpful, but um, Lima will do the job just fine. Uh, channel defaults to 11. I think if you're not running Mavericks, um, it might say auto or something. Um, but yeah, just leave the default channel security, leave it as none. And then click create. That creates the ad hoc network. Uh, give it a few seconds. And then you see this logo changes to this weird little symbol you've probably never seen before. Then I'm going to go to settings on the iPad. I'm going to go to Wi Fi, which is what's also known as Wi Fi or Wi Fi. And you're going to go down to Devices and click Lima. Um, and now you're connected to the Mac. And it also means both your devices aren't connected to the internet, which is good because it means you won't get distracted by looking at that video of the Lemas that I told you to look at. Um, it's pretty awesome. So now the devices are connected. Um, what you're going to want to do next is probably open up uh, Lima Editor and Lima Demon. So Lima Editor, let's open that guy up. And then Lima Demon, I'll open that guy up. So the very first thing to double check is basically Lima Demon because it's super easy to overlook, especially because by default, it's not set up how you want. And uh, if you don't set it up, you'll just get really frustrated as to why the two devices aren't talking to each other. So we're gonna click the little button at the top of the screen, set up Lima Demon. And by default, these two settings won't be here. So in fact, what we should do is I'll remove them and then I'll reset them up. So I'm going to go to add. Uh, oh, there's a button here that says launch demon on startup. So it's up to you whether or not you want it running in the background the whole time. But you don't necessarily need to. All you need to know is that this little bit of software called Lima Demon is what kind of routes all the MIDI around. And it what, it's what will allow Tractor or if you were to use another program, whether it's to control lights or able to live or whatever, it allows that to kind of talk to the Lima. So we're going to go to add. I'm going to daemon MIDI in, and then we're going to choose daemon output zero. And then select destination for port. Oh, I probably should have um, turned on Lima on the iPad. That's probably a good idea. Let's do that. 
start again. So yeah, turn on Lima on the iPad, probably a good shout. Demon MIDI in, uh, Demon output zero, and then you'll actually see the iPad. Um, click the iPad and do Lima in zero. And that means we've got kind of local port daemon output zero sends to Adam's iPad Lima in zero. Um, so now we're going to do the same but in reverse. So add MIDI out daemon input zero Adam's iPad out one. And now we can see we got um, daemon output zero sends or daemon input zero receives from Adam's iPad. Whatever, just get it looking like that. Um, that basically just means they know how to talk to each other and it's rooting the MIDI in the appropriate way. And you also can start to get a flavor for how complicated of a setup you can do with this thing. Just looking at how many MIDI channels you can have all running at the same time. It's pretty cray cray if you tell me, if you ask me. And uh, you are, so it's cray cray tings. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. And then you can click close and then it's still running in the background. Just make sure it's kind of loaded and shit. Um, so now MIDI's rooted. We can have a look at our Lima editor screen thing. So we got this is just kind of the default new project. Um, what we're going to do is just set up a very basic button uh, to map to tractor and a very basic fader. And then after I've showed you how to map those, I'll give you, I'll kind of show you some of the templates that come with Lima to give you a flavor as to how advanced and how ridiculously cool this app is if you use it to its full potential. So we got this little bit on the side. I think these are called objects or modules or something. Um, can't remember what they call it in the user guide, but we're gonna drag some out. So we're gonna grab, drag a fader onto the main screen. Um, and then we're gonna drag, um, let's grab a, actually let's not drag a fader, let's grab a, oh my God, text message. Um, gonna drag a knob out, and then we're gonna drag a button or custom button, that'll do. Um, sweet. And then you'll also notice you can kind of quickly drag them a, drag them out or do whatever else you need to. So now we've got a basic um, knob and a button on our daemon editor. We need to actually connect it to the iPad so they actually start to kind of coincide with each other. So when we go up to the top right of the screen, click this big play button, which isn't very helpful in terms of what it looks like, but it says Lima connection, so we're gonna click it. And we're gonna click Adam's iPad, because my name is Adam, not Multiplier. Actually, it's Multiplier, not Adam. That's a joke. And we've got all this complicated IP address shit. Um, let me click Connect, and then boom! It's the same on the iPad. And you can see you can start to actually kind of use the knobs or press the button or whatever else it is you wanna do. Now, you may notice um, as you start to kind of play about on the iPad with these things, um, it doesn't coincide to what the screen is doing. However, if you click this little button that looks like a bunch of arrows chasing each other, it says Lima Synchro, which is pretty sure, I'm sure it's short for synchronization. Rearrange those words into a sentence. And now, when you press something on the iPad, it does the same on the screen, kind of, sometimes. But yeah, that can be useful if you're debugging, but it's not really necessary. Cool. Um, so that's the basic kind of connection is made. Um, so what we're going to do now is try and map this to something in Tractor. So let's open up Tractor. And then I'm thinking what we should do is map it to the effect unit 2. And um, we should map the knob to this kind of dry, wet thing. And then we should map the button to this on-off. Sounds pretty cool. So first of all, we are going to kind of do all the necessary... phone. I'm doing a tutorial. Um, we're going to set everything up in the daemon editor. So first of all, we're gonna to go to the knob. Um, we can go to this section in the top left. We're using MIDI in this case. And then for object target, we're gonna do MIDI zero, MIDI zero. For the message, uh, we're gonna do B zero, which is called control change, which is that CC thing, um, as we'll get to when we map in tractor. Um, so if you've ever mapped in tractor before, you'll see it says like channel one, CC two or whatever. That CC means control change. Um, then we're going to choose a controller value, let's leave it as zero, and then actually let's call it one for jokes. Um, so CC1, and then channel is set to one anyway. So now this knob is basically doing the MIDI action of channel one, CC1. And then we're going to do a similar thing for the button. We're going to go to object target, MIDI zero, MIDI zero. 
because if you remember in the Lima Demon thing, we were using the MIDI channel zero. Um, message, uh, I'm pretty sure it's control change again. And then channel one, let's call it CC2, um, which is this controller value here. Now, this, all this kind of MIDI shit is pretty complicated. Um, we're just doing a very basic thing. But as you start to have a play about with all the kind of settings and stuff, very quickly you realize how ridiculously complicated you can make it for yourself. Um, you could even do like scripting in C as well if you want to do some mad shit, um, which some, some people do. Um, not me, I'm a simpleton. Anyway, um, let's drag out this a bit bigger because I quite fancy it. And let's drag this out a bit bigger so I have a bigger area to whack. So we've got this set up. We've got um, MIDI channel. Well, the MIDI channel we're using is zero, but the actual channel, um, kind of the next level down is one. And then CC1 for the knob and then CC2 for the button. We've got to remember that. And then in fact, what we could do for the button is go down to this text bit down here and go off and then on. And now when we press it on and off, it actually goes on and off, which is pretty cool. And now we do synchro, still doesn't do what I thought it would do. But yeah, on and off, pretty useful. You can kind of change what the buttons and knobs look like in quite an advanced way if you like. But we'll ignore that shit for now. And go over to Tractor. Hopefully you're still following me. I know it's complicated. So we're going to go after System Preferences, or just Preferences in Tractor. Controller Manager, because technically, even though it's an interface, it's kind of like a, kind of like a controller. Going to go over to Device, click Add, Generic MIDI. Now for the Import, we're going to want Daemon Input 0, and then the Output, Daemon Output 0, which is basically referring to the, the MIDI channels we mapped earlier um, in the Daemon. Uh, the Lima Demon, because remember up here we had input Demon input zero, Demon output zero. Um, that coincides in tractor to the import here, input zero, output zero. Kind of a, see how it works now. And then what we need to do now is add in those kind of settings for the knob and the button. So knob, lol, add in. Um, effects unit, dry, wet, adjust, and then assignment, effects unit two. And then remember the knob was channel one, CC one. Um, and then if we add in uh, effects unit, unit on, effects unit two, um, channel one, CC two. Hopefully it kind of works. Sweet. Now I might have edited some dual screen action going on to kind of illustrate that it is working. Um, yeah, I can at least verify it is, which is pretty cool. So that's kind of your basic mapping. Um, it's pretty awesome. Uh, so if you wanted just a really simple setup, you can do. Um, you can do some cool things in the settings on the iPad, like more settings, um, skin, I don't know, pixels, see what pixels like. That, sh that changes the kind of the look of everything. Um, so you can change the kind of the vibe of the of the buttons and stuff. Uh, let's use classic. The faders look pretty cool in classic. I'll show you one of those guys. See how cool they look. Um, but yeah, what you can do, now you've noticed when you're actually performing or DJing or playing in your room to your cat, you may not want the Lima editor actually open when you kind of play in your set just because it's an extra application open and it might kind of break or you might might just get in your way. Um, it's fine to leave it open just in the background, but you don't have to. What you can do, once you've designed your interface, um, you can save it directly to the iPad. So in the settings, you can kind of save project, give it a name like untitled um, five and then return. And now you can hit project. You can kind of go to Untitled 5 whenever you like and not have to load up the Lima editor to get it all loaded up. Um, now, you will always have to have a Lima Demon running in the background because obviously that's how the MIDI kind of gets rooted. But um, yeah, it's worth knowing you can save the project directly onto the iPad, which is pretty cool things. Um, so yeah, what I should probably do now is show you some of the potential um, 
you've really started to get advanced with your mapping and your coding um, by showing you some of these pre-built templates. So we're going to go to iPad, Lima Pong, and we've actually got a game of Pong going on. So let's hit this button. And this is all, this game of Pong is completely useless pretty much for actually um, doing anything useful. But actually, I am pretty sure if I remember correctly, as I know you can, you could map, say, the X position or the Y position of the little little ball to control someone in Tractor. So you could map your effects or anything cool. Or you could map an instrument in live to the ball here. Um, but this just gives you a rough idea of uh, the potential. Um, that one's just for lulls. Let's show you a more serious one. Oops. Settings, project, um, LFO, iPad, LFO Studio. Let's check that out. So you can see someone's gone to a lot of effort to do something. No idea what this does. It just does stuff. That's all I know. There's all sorts of these buttons that do sh do shit, but I don't know what that does. A fader. Um, settings. Let's have a look at something else. Um, break point two. What's this look like? So, so look at this. This is really complicated. So someone's obviously done something really cool with that up there. Um, this looks like the sort of thing that you would map to like an instrument or something in like a music production setting. But I'm um, just kind of checking that out. Look how mad that looks. You can imagine that if you really wanted to, you could set up something really, really cool for kind of live production or even just for lols, really. Um, I, I don't know how this works. AB Vector. And then you've got this thing here. It's like a star shape. And then we can kind of move it about and it changes. And a little line follows it around. And, and there's a lot of like physics, um, physics engines built into Lima. And that's one of the things that people who know it really well really love. Um, for example, I can probably hopefully show you an example of some of the physics-y physics shit. AB Fader Lab. Um, this is probably not the best example of physics. Um, this one? No, no, no. I know. Project. New project. I'll show you something physics here. Right. Uh, now let's load up. Something on the screen, and um, let's delete the current things we got loaded up. And we're going to grab a multi slider. Multi slider, let's choose slider number 10. So now we've got 10 of them. Let's make it bare big. Um, behavior, click physics. And now, ooh, look at that, look at that. It's all physics in like boingy and shit. Um, and then you can change the friction. So let's make the friction lower. Cray cray, cray cray action going on right now. Let's make it bigger. Rip. Move it about. Rip. Ring, 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 ring. So you can see how useful that is. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's kind of me just fucking about now, which is uh, cool stuff. Um, wow, 20 minute video. But hopefully, um, even if you haven't got Lima, if you just watched it for the jokes, you can start to imagine the potential that Lima offers. It's pretty much a platform for making anything you like. Um, that's gonna keep bouncing forever. Um, but yeah, so comparatively cheap apps, only like 20 quid or something or $20. I can't remember, I bought it ages ago, never used it until now. Um, but yeah, when you bear in mind how expensive the actual Lima was when it first came out, it was that massive screen. Um, it was like 10 grand or something. I think that Dev Mouse and a bunch of other people were using. Uh, it's pretty crazy that for a comparatively small amount of money on the iPad, you can set up your own interfaces and control anything that receives MIDI, whether it's Tractor, Ableton Live, control lights with it. You can do pretty much anything you can imagine with MIDI. It's it's pretty cray cray. Anyway, that's enough for me. Um, yeah, enjoy making stuff in Lima and hopefully you don't get too frustrated because I know how ridiculously complicated it can get. Um, yeah, have a play about with it. Cool stuff. Enjoy. I've been multiplier. Um, yeah, it's been the video. Laters. Potatoes.